Hey guys, Coyote Hero again and back from the dead to go over the new update 35 patch notes. Something a little different and I will also be looking at it from more of a DK standpoint since that's what I main and play 95% of the time. If there are any other questions about other classes, Templar, Sork, etc. or the new sets, anything like that, please feel free to let me know in the comments and I will respond to you specifically to the best of my knowledge. I might be a DK plea, but I still know and play the other classes as well. So getting into it, we are going to do this one shot, no cuts, no nothing. You guys will see my straight thoughts and any moronic comments and everything else I make along the way. So by now we all know that light and heavy attacks will deal a flat amount of damage rather than scaling. So the melee light attacks is going to be 2250 while range light attacks, I'm assuming bow, staff, etc. will deal 10% less than that, which should be... 2050, 2025. Fully charged will deal 2500 multiplied by cast time and cooldown with 10% less for range. So two handed heavies will take 1.8 seconds and deal 4500. Medium attacks will scale. The final hit from resto and lightning staves can be dodged to ensure there is better counterplay at denying an opponent resources and the stronger portion of the attack. Well, that's interesting. I might actually change the, uh, I've already been experimenting and changing the weapons, the front and back bar on my main DK, but this is definitely going to have some influence now over that. Resources fully starred will be streamlined, granting 1350 based on the cat. So it's doing the same thing. It's going to multiply it by whatever the cooldown is for the attack. So we can kind of figure that out so two-handed is 2425 rest those staffs a bit longer you get more ice and inferno is also up there that's good to take note of bow will do 2700 man that's a longer charge time than i thought lightning staffs will do oh they're actually being reduced another good point since i really like lightning staffs as well all right, so they've adjusted more sets and passes. So let's go and look now at the dot abilities. They're trying to bump everything to 20 seconds from 10. This will be shown later. I've already taken a look at the changes for DKs. That's pretty much what they do. All dots will tick now on a two second frequency rather than two seconds if they were single target and one second if they were area of effect base. Okay, so I think this is more just changing the area of effect then. So that they are ticking every two seconds. Everything's ticking two seconds now. That, that's basically what they're doing. This is the general statement of what they were trying to do. That dots would be twice the damage of a normal spammable. I'm still not too sure entirely how this is going to work out since you will be able to use your spammable more since most of these are being ticked up that said pvp i know that's not going to matter as much with people purging and i mean it was usually the upfront cost of these dots the upfront direct damage that is really uh you know the dots are mostly a bonus i feel like this will result in an approximate 33% decrease for dots while making them more worthwhile in long-term fights and easier to keep up, counting they don't get purged. A lot of this does seem to be more from a PvE standpoint. Alright, so healing over time. Single targets now heal for about 1.5 times the damage of a spammable rather than 1.875. So burst heals have actually been reduced a little bit. Area of effect healing will deal two times, but AoEs have gone up. I don't know how much that will really affect PvP. There's not exactly a lot of stacking, you know, ground heals. <coughs> Excuse me, see, coughing, that's going to be in the final cut. You guys are going to have to deal with all of that this whole way through. So rather than two seconds, okay. All of these will pretty much be up to 20. We heard about this. Raid dummy, they changed the crusher enchant instead of an infused torags. Engulfing flame, I guess they left at 10% <laughs> instead of six. That's kind of a pretty big oversight there. 
Alkosh Roar is up, which is odd since you should easily have all of it decreased by then. But uh, that's fine. Oh, Minor Courage and Major Slayer. Really? Well, okay. Uh, I don't know. That That's going to make some people think that their damage is a lot higher than it is when they're not actually playing with big coordinated groups. Here's another big one, especially for my ganking heavy attack DK. Empower. This buff now grants 1,800 rather than 40%, which is actually a lot larger than the 40% before probably was. Or maybe it's similar, but 1,800 compared to the original... Uh, you know, what was it? 2025 uh, is going to be a lot bigger boost than 40%. Um, so getting to the meat and potatoes of what I wanted to do about this video, we are now at the Dragon Knight portion. So Fiery Breath, this duration was increased and it's morphs to 20, per, 20 seconds up from 10. I was getting ahead of myself reading the percent. The damage per tick is reduced by approximately 17%. So that we already knew what was going to happen. Again, part of the reason I use this is for the upfront damage for boosting the Molten Whip stacks and as well it's six percent damage now but that six percent flame damage is still a huge boost for mag decays if you can call them mag decays these days firing chains empowering now grants for 10 seconds up from three all right that's fair um kind of interesting though actually some at least now you could actually cast this before and your heavy a attack after would uh actually land <laughs> and it will be empowered because typically what i had to do was i was hitting my heavy and then chains afterward to make sure that empower was up by the time the heavy attack landed because i believe it for an inferno heavy it's two seconds for charge and then one second for travel no matter the distance that you're at so lava whip okay this is going to be a bit of a big change here molten whip will now cause the ability to split to half stam and half magicka which i think is really unique on an eso scale i don't think i've ever seen a scale uh, a skill that costs both resources reduce the stacking bonus to 20 percent per stack down from 33 percent all right so that's going to be a, a bit huge it's basically meaning that when you have three stacks up, you are going to be from 99% to 60%. So no more big double whips, but that is still an impressive amount of damage. I've never always ensured that I got to three stacks before cracking that whip. Uh, a little bit less as a uh, executioner attack. I know mag DK, DKs don't have an exclusive execution ability but molten whip when you got it up to the three stacks kind of did that but here's another good difference the stacks will now be 100 up from 75 and that portion of seething fury is no longer consumed when using molten whip so basically you use uh three skills from the ardent flame line and you have 300 damage now up for 10 seconds period as long as you're using one of those skills you'll keep those three stacks up and this 300 weapon damage spell damage is going to apply across the board for every one of your skills so you're going to get about 75 more weapon damage it's obviously not going to make up for this extra 40 percent difference up here but that is at least some compensation and again your dots everything else that you're going to be using is going to be affected by that let's see what they had to say about this more available to hybrid builds take a very unique route yep very very unique in doing so we hope more unique interactions as well as more stam focused dks in sustaining the skill so again you can tell just right away that this is looking from a pve standpoint uh then a pvp i don't think there has been any stam dk using whip that has found trouble sustaining since you can still get the stacks you can still get those stack bonuses to molten using poison abilities and for them they were probably using cauterize for the heal as opposed to uh flames of oblivion for the damage so i i don't think i don't think stam dks if you can 
or as they put it, stam focused DKs. Um, really ever had a, any issues with that in PvP. Again, most of these changes just seem to be taken from a PvE mindset. We know that Zost isn't PvP that much, they don't think about it that much, and we're typically reduced to the back burner. And by back burner, I mean we haven't gotten new content in three years, which is much longer than I've been playing. Well, not much longer. I guess I've been playing for about three years now. Shit. Anyway, um, going back, Searing Heat reduced the damage to of this passive to 25 down to 33 okay a little less searing strike this is one that i've been curious about because they just reduced the healing using burning embers and it looks like we have something about that here so increase the duration and it's morphs to 20 seconds right naturally reduce the damage tick by 25 percent burning embers increase the amount of this healing back to 100 percent up from 50 okay so basically they're saying they they've reduced the dot down and so the healing isn't as crazy as it was before the previous reduction was made as a stopgap before this pass could be completed now that the ability deals less damage we're comfortable bumping it back up okay all right that that's fair i'll take that oh that makes it a bit more of a worthwhile heal you know going over 10 seconds it's still going to take every two but i believe that's something that it was doing already venomous claw morph this morph now increases damage done by 9 to 12 percent down from 17 to 20 as it no longer stacks up to a higher value okay so it's just not going to ramp up as quickly and that's kind of a shame I, I was thinking about actually trying that even on the mag dk just to see what the extra damage was but that was also because the healing was reduced now it seems like it'll be pretty even and nice draconic power dark talons the cost of this was has been reduced some help be more accessible in usability and do account for the fact that immobilized may fail okay inhale reduce the cost of this ability and it's morphs to 3500 from 4050 okay i really like that we both everybody knows how much i love using deep breath for that extra burst that well-timed burst that uh poor man's uh the poor man shocks um originally this was higher to account for the hit damage and healed since these values are each half of an area of effect based attack it wasn't gaining any ability functionality so we're using it back to make up for the oversight oh so the heal is actually i never knew that i never knew that because it was an aoe attack the heal was actually smaller than it should have been all right anyway protective plate increase the duration of the snare and immobilization immunity to four seconds up from two trying to bring wings back okay cool cool this ability now deals flame damage rather than magic damage oh that's good this is spiked armor has actually become a really good skill on both of its morphs now well the damage is going to be less having it upped by flame damage means things like engulfing breath or fiery breath whatever the fuck it's called uh will now um be affecting this ability as well when the magic damage didn't really give us much now this was one i was actually reading up on pretty uh good earlier ash cloud this ability now lasts 20 seconds up from 15 will now tick twice once every two seconds rather than once every second increase the cost per tick of ash cloud to 630 to match the frequency this doesn't mean anything this is just the math that because instead of ticking every once and reducing you know costing what 315 it's reduced it, it's still it, it's just doing it to adjust for the tick being every two seconds as opposed to every second and i would think that you're going to get double the heal yep this is exactly increasing the healing tick of this by 94 percent so those two ticks will make up for getting the one tick twice oh, man that's a mouthful ain't it all right so overall they will now tick one extra time over their duration um 
Cinderstorm, increase the healing protect by this morph by approximately 80%. This is going to be a hell of a heal. I, I've actually been experimenting and trying this. I tend to use it a, a little bit more in like duels than open world, but that is going to be a huge, huge heal. As well, you're going to get that free stand back every time you cast it. And with it being a cost per tick than an overall skill, that's something we know that you can spam this to get stand back. And with the extra dots being longer and the extra heals, it's probably going to be worth it to do so. Uh, eruption, more of a PVE skill. I use this on my PVE DK. Reduce the cost of this morph to 315 to ensure it costs a similar amount to other dots and increase the damage per tick by approximately 7%. So this, I think, is gonna be, is probably one of the biggest buff skills that DK has got. And, oh, excuse me. If you wanna try to go for the damage, uh, you certainly can in PvP. <coughs> See, more coughing, there you go. Enjoy the, the one cut. But, uh, my issue with this was always if you're trying to get it to slow down somebody running away i.e a you know trash or spamming streak it just doesn't work that well you can't force them to stay in that damage for very long i would definitely focus this on the heal for pvp um since you can control your position a lot better than your enemies right all right molten weapons here we go Igneous weapons, this morph now extends the duration up to 60 seconds, up from 45, and then this should actually be extended longer by one of the passives that's not coming to mind, because I know my igne igneous weapons I think last for 53 or 54 seconds, so I think this will actually be pumped up to 72 seconds, which, you know, your whole group getting gets a uh, major brutality, major sorcery, sorcery? No, that's a crit one. Oh. Anyway, it gets major damage buffs to everybody in your group, and for 72 seconds, that's going to be insane. That's going to be really helpful uh, as well for sustain, so that because you're going to be casting this a hell of a lot less. And now, long live the heavy attack DK. This morph now grants the caster empower for the duration of the effect, rather than increasing the damage of their heavy attacks by a unique value. So that extra 50% DK damage that you would normally get from Molten Armaments is no longer there. The heavy attack burst is going to be much lessened for DKs. I still think that straight heavy attack builds will have a good chance to be relevant in PvP, but they it's going to be a lot harder, especially with the vamp toggle nerf a while ago, to be able to get to those 35, 40Ks. But I think it'll be up there. And thankfully, my ganker DK only leans on the heavy attacks now. I really enjoyed mixing in a lot more DK skills. Uh, it's a lot more fun and a lot more interesting than getting up, you know, eight buffs and freaking casting once and hoping it crits. Petrify, this ability now deals flame damage rather than magic damage. Okay, so Dragon Knights, now the Flame King. We don't do magic damage. Magic, what the fuck is that? We only know fire and flame. All this, again, if you have any questions about these other class, something you want my thoughts on something you want me to touch on just let me know um some of the templar changes i think are going to be interesting i know sorks the uh savage werewolf and uh crystal weapon sorks are getting a big nerf so uh that's good that that's real good there's way too many of them and way too much damage when it comes to ogun soul weapon bow volley again 20 seconds destruction staff Wall of Elements, 20 seconds. Increase the damage per tick by 33%. See, this is why like heavy attacks builds are not gonna be dead. If this is increasing tick and then you still get, I definitely think there's gonna be some ways to do it for sure. It's just gonna be a matter of taking into account all of these changes to kind of settle in and uh, everybody realize the difference because really that's the one thing that I'm kind of upset with this is that 
they've had all of the big hybridization changes and everything else right and they said okay combat set we're only going to be making minor tweaks and they've been doing things like that with the cp points and all and then they release this that is changing the base combat of the game entirely flurry is now a four times channel rapid strikes bloodthirst i'm just obviously going over all this some people use some of these on dks so i just wanted to at least be on the screen okay regen i wanted to see this and the rest of their staff reduce the healing per tick of this ability and it's morphs by 40 percent that's huge that's huge we've all complained about the rapid uh regen or the just the regen spam in general and now two for one you know so now it's practically being cut in half it will go longer and I'm worried that it's going to allow healers to spam their burst heal more. I don't know. Again, this is just something that we're not going to know until it settles in. People will get used to it and we kind of see the results of it. Rapid regen. This now increases healing done by up to 50% on targets under 100% health. Oh, that's weird why didn't they just increase the skill amount like what's it gonna do when you're at 100 percent health it's not healing you so uh, that's kind of sneaky but we all know rapid regen unless you're running by yourself as a ganker that hits somebody else 90 percent of the time when <laughs> you actually need that heal i only run rapid by myself i mean hell i i rarely use the rest of their staff uh, i think the I think I use it most on, on my Magsork when I decide to hop on him. Um, DKs, I've tried to avoid it just kind of for the added challenge. And uh, I got a pretty tanky build as it is, especially for running all light armor practically. So anyway, uh, two-handed carve, reduce the damage tick. Okay, right, right. Crit charge, sp stampede. This morph will tick every two seconds over 20 seconds rather than every over 15 decreasing the damage per tick by 33 percent well that that seems like a big nerf to me if they're or maybe not it just might be about equal to the time uh extension there so this isn't this is actually going to be one of the skills that didn't get a overall damage boost to it um, with the longer dot it's just taking the damage and spreading it out over a longer time force will increase the splash damage of this passive to 50 or 100 percent of damage done with light and heavies up from 25 to 50 percent okay so they made heavies with two-handed a bigger aoe to account for the lost damage um for the lost boost to light and heavies upper rack empower for five seconds what's five seconds gonna do okay whatever um armor heavy armor fix an issue where this passive's bonus can fail to contribute to abilities or effect that used physical or spell wow so that's gonna be nice for uh fragman that's gonna be nice for some of the bash builds and the like and the things that other things that scale whoa magic werewolf uh 20 seconds cause of life Reduce the amount of healing based on damage done to 66% down from 100 since it can instantly apply an area of effect and provide significantly more healing than other... Mer okay, so that's a slight nerf. Um, this morph now causes the entire ability to apply the disease status effect. Man, werewolves are still going to be so annoying. Fighters Guild, I'm not going to go over too much of this. I don't think a lot of these end up used on DK at the very least. Entropy. All right, it's just increasing the dot. This is just the dot adjustment. All right, Sigic, accelerate. Increase the base cost of this ability and it's morphs to 40, 50, up from 37. Well, that's not too much of a cost. Increase the duration of minor force to 20 seconds, up from 12. That is very nice. We all know how much I like my crit and the extra damage. This will cause channel accelerations minor force to triple to 60 seconds instead of tripling to 36. That 
is huge. I don't think there's anything else that I'll give Minor Force for that long. Okay, now I'm looking back at Barb Trap since this actually does give Minor Force. It doesn't say. So that's just going to be for 20 seconds then. I know a lot of people don't like channeled accelerations, channel time, and they like the snare reduction for race against time, which has been increased. The snare and immobilization immunity to four seconds. So either way, it, whatever morph you'd like to use, um, I, I mean, that's a huge buff being able to double that. And I mean, 60 seconds of minor force, that's really nice as well. None of the passives and Undaunted. Okay, Alliance War, Caltrops. This ability and its morphs will now tick every two seconds over 20 seconds rather than every second over 10. Increase the damage per tick by approximately 33%. All right, that, that's probably to, a com to compensate for it ticking every two seconds versus one. So the dot is going to be a lot less overall than what it used to be. Fix an issue where these abilities fail to apply their effects when cast at long ranges and under the effect of range enhancing bonuses. So, so <laughs> this wasn't working in PVP is what they were saying. If you had cast it at that 36 meter range, <laughs> oh my God. Um, uh, the bugs in this game, man. Oh, uh, I hope leap still works in icy. God forbid. All right. And anti-cavalry, the effect is 10 seconds up from four. I don't know anybody who actually uses that one to, uh, just reduce the movement. I think it reduces mount movement too. All right. Vigor one. A lot of people using, I've been switching this and cinder storm a decent bit. Um, so let's see what happens with it. Now last 10 seconds at base up from eight. Reduce the healing per tick of this ability and echoing vigor by approximately 17%. This morph now extends the duration up to six seconds up from two with echo echoing vigor, the group morph, so that you're healing everybody. Resolving vigor, the selfish vigor. Reduce the healing per tick by approximately 22% but it'll last longer, so the heal will still be good. But now grants major resolve for 20 seconds after casting. That's interesting. And again, though, with like the DK spikes, both of them, both morphs being buffed recently, in that the, the damage shield morph has been buffed a large. It's actually been the one that I've been using lately because the other one did magic damage, but now it does flame damage. But if you use vigor, you don't need the major resolve buff from it as well. So th that's kind of neat for a couple of optional things. But again, I don't know, not having that, man, th this heal might be better than th the damage shield morph. Just thinking about it. If you want to go on the more attack sided though, obviously the other one's going to be better. Seed shield, fix an issue where this ability and its morphs would end early. All right, we are finally down. You can probably hear some of the strain in my voice just going through this over the last 10 minutes or whatever it's been. So now, Warfare, Force of Nature. Reduce the amount of armor pen this node grants by 660 per status effect down from 900. All right, I, I had a, what I thought would be kind of a neat, interesting setup for that uh, status effect that new craftable set that they had just released. But this, yeah, this takes it down a notch. I'm obviously a big fan of uh, Pen, but um, um, but reducing this by 240, like 750 for three attack facts, a thousand. That's like a 3% damage reduction. If you had 4%, yeah, that sucks. That just sucks. Um, they've done a lot to reduce damage, I think, already. And, um, I don't know, changing this slottable. It seemed like 900 was a much better, uh, incentive to use status effects. Because a lot of people, I, I know, think of dot effects, debuffs, that don't actually count towards this. This is only things like hemorrhage. This is only things like burning, shock, um that you actually get credit for this. So, and those don't do a lot of damage. They don't do a lot for you overall. Uh, 
a big reduction for status effect builds and the sneaky dot builds. Fix an issue where this the node did not properly work with many of the status effectives and could lose effectiveness when some status effects such as chilled provided the what? If the named buff provided from the status effect was overridden by a longer duration version. My God, that's a mouthful. But okay, so they're basically saying when you had things uh, like chilled, if it uh, brittle procced, I'm assuming that it wouldn't give credit for this. My God, guys. I know there's a lot of detail and I know there's a lot of roundabout things, but this feels like something obvious. Weapons expert. Now increases light and attack damage by 4% per stage up from 3%. All right, so again, I don't think heavy attack builds are going to be entirely gone. I kind of like my ganker setup a little bit more even now, being a little less reliant on the heavy and a little bit more mixing in DK skills. I know I haven't released that yet. I've been meaning to for a long time, but this week I am going to get the current state of my builds out and then uh once this releases i will do something more because i do have new sets on both of them so particularly my battle bomber um i, I think is really popping oaken soul <coughs> oaken soul is um kind of an easier way to uh get high damage of course we know i'm not big on spammables that's why even my pve dk uh use chains to build up the molten whip procs instead of just spamming molten whip um i like a more involved experience that's why i haven't been a fan of oaken soul i i'll be honest i didn't even buy the uh the chapter because card game oaken soul they just weren't interesting to me um sergeant mail this is going to be something that changes for the heavy it now grants you a stack for five seconds whenever you're dealing damage with a heavy increasing them by 645 per st stack and stacking once every half second and up to four times so this is going to take away the front end damage for sure but you know look up look down noble doula strikes has been increased to a flat amount uh, since they don't have the scaling anymore. Uh, Undaunted Infiltrator. Uh, light uh, heavy attacks against monsters. Okay, so that that I think that's been gone and done anyway. But there's options. There's definitely options. And again, uh, it doesn't have to be as big on the heavy. I might just release it as a ganker build. So now, uh, just a couple more last things for PVP sets and mythic items. Oaken Soul, as I had just mentioned, was being very OP for damage, particularly DKs that just wanted to spam fossilized whip and either corrosive or leap because they had major heroism. All of these have been, now been uh, reduced to the minor versions, which does seem more in line with what you could get you know with two bars or you know within a small group rather than the ma major versions but it now grants minor mending i still think this is going to be a little bit much overall i think this is maybe a few too many buffs that you would be able to set up between a normal two bar setup um but now we're looking at you know it being more of a you know more of having like an extra monster set or two rather than you know three ultimates with a major berserk and major force major heroism i'm not even sure you could actually give into a group um so i still think there's going to be ways to set this up that makes this powerful i don't think that this is particularly op at this point i do think a little bit of reduction wouldn't be bad but this is at least a step in the right direction and they've talked about making further adjustments as they figure out the balance in future pa patches which i really hope are actually very minor um overall having to deal with this every three months um it gets overwhelming and is a cause of a burnout for a number of vet players 
All right, Dark Convergence have increased the cooldown of the set to 25 up from 15. Um, ultimate like effects of the battlefield. Yeah, so all of those, uh, it's mostly used on the, the Necro Bombers now, but they will have a lot less bombs. Uh, excuse me. They will have a lot less bombs now with the cooldown being increased. And um, that... I think will be a lot nicer and make it a lot less annoying overall. But of course, most of these groups have like two or three of these guys anyway. So, I mean, group play versus solo is going to still be very crazy. Um, that's actually something that I wanted them to do with Oak and Soul, wherever the hell that did right there. I went totally past it. I thought it would be cooler that as their group size increases, some of these buffs just start ticking away. That way, you know, you, a lot of these buffs you would get in a group fairly easily, I feel like. And now this still opens them up to be able to give either different buffs. I'm not sure if there are very many others or be able to focus more heavily on their damage or healing. So to that end, I'm not sure I would like to see this reduced in groups. Uh, again, you know, say after the first four, you know, these start uh, when your group reaches up to four, you lose like three of these. When it increases up to six, you increase the rest. Uh, and when it gets up to eight, you even lose the sustain bonuses. Um, but that's not really what they're looking at for this, right? They're looking at it for new players and particularly on a PVE standpoint, which again, their reasoning. The reasoning is very thin, but that is very Zoss, is it not? All right, uh, Rothgar's Chill. The set's damage can no longer be blocked. Plague Break. This set now has a cooldown of 20 seconds per target, rather than only against targets that do not already have the dot on them. This set can now proc multiple any enemies from a singular attack, reducing the dot by approximately 50%. But this damage can now crit strike as it does not have any ingrained modifiers built into it. All right. I mean, that, se that seems fair. The dot was maybe a little bit too high as it was anyway. And increase the damage of the explosion by approximately 3% while also always implying applying the disease status effect. I think this is... I don't use disease a lot, but I think with some of the healing particularly being reduced down, this... I, I never liked being... I don't like being overly meta. I mean, even switching to Burning Spellweave was kind of a uh, drastic change for me versus uh, Mother Sorrow, which I still like Mother Sorrow. Crit, I think, has been underrated for a while now. I think it's starting to get a bit more prominence. But Burning Spellweave, it was just a little bit more even with the damage, more even with the heals, rather than hoping that something had to crit. But I don't know. I might try this. I've been thinking about trying a Stam version of my Battle Bomber. If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know. So I have more incentive to test it out. Let's see what they had to say. Set is being run in far too many situations outside of its target's audience. Was made to punish groups, stacking purges, and due to the current nature, it is punishing those who aren't using a cleanse either as a dot is dealing sizable damage with no downtime. Okay, good, good. So that's why this 50% is going to be so big. If you weren't purging it and just trying to live out the dot, um, it might actually be doable now. With a cooldown window, we hope to introduce more counterplay to the set by giving a window of safety from being a carrier. Again, 20 per se seconds. So now you live through the dot. You can't be inflicted with this for 20 seconds. We hope to in introduce more counterplay to the set. Uh, wait, wait, I just read that. While still retaining the pain for those purging and dying too close together. Um, I particularly think, you know, I mean, we got, just got all dots extended, right? There's going to be a lot of people wanting to run purges, wanting to run cleanses, wanting to run purifies. And this, again, is going to be a big, big punishing set for them. So, uh, 
I think that's everything. Increased XP, increased XP, 10%. Uh, the two, oh, oh, hey, whoa, 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 we like those dudes being buried to their necks up in the snow. What? Come on, man. We spent all the time being able to do that. Increasing monster de density in sewer areas. Okay. Yeah, I believe that's everything that's going to apply to RDK. So I think the overall thing, obviously, dots are extended. Um, Oaken Soul got nerfed. Some of the more annoying PvP sets have been adjusted accordingly, with Dark Convergence taking longer, Plague Break, the dot being less, and but cleansing it still being just as or more punishing. Uh, rest in peace single heavy attack yanks on the dk um i think those are going to still see a much lessened i i i, I think 30k 25k back when we were trying to do that uh uh, with Sawman and, and everything, I, I think that might be more of the target markers as opposed to these dudes hitting. I think I heard somebody hit like a 47k heavy attack. Um, even on my, uh, again, heavy attack leaning gank setup, I, I've hit a few gankers for like 27k on some crits. And I'm not even fully specced for heavy attacks anymore. You know, that wasn't using a corrosive, that wasn't using a, uh, a resto ult. So I, I think that's going to be much more evened out and much more in line with some of the other bursty attacks. Uh, uh, Assassin's Will comes to mind. Even the current uh, Molten Whip comes to mind because um, you can hit 15, 20k uh, on some nice crits with those for sure. But I think overall, overall, I think the light attack and heavy attack changes won't be as significant as uh, implied. The damage reduction is less. I think some of the healing will be a bit less. I'm still worried about burst heals overall. But I think that'll be it. I think DK is still going to be fun to play. I'm glad they took away that, that Oaken nerf. Um, one bars were way too powerful way too powerful uh, and maybe even these actually just need a drawback i don't know maybe these need to rotate slightly in a group of three something similar to daedric trickery but if you have any other questions if there was something i did not go over if there was something that uh, maybe my analysis was a little bit off. I'm a little bit curious what people will come back and think of or the PTS, uh, which I believe is out today or tomorrow. Um, I won't be getting on that, but I I'm curious how this all works and balances out. I don't know how it's going to balance in between the classes. It looks like they took a lot of time in trying to make sure you know the spammable to dot ratios were fairly even so i'm assuming that's also the case and from what i saw scanning over before doing this i think that's going to be the case so hopefully there's a bit more class balance now and um it'll produce a more fun experience in pvp uh, that's what i'm really hoping because it's really obnoxious right now running into groups all wearing oaken and everything else um so again final wrap up one take all of this is in there um please leave a comment if there's something i didn't touch on or maybe missed a little again of the analysis of and uh again look forward to my pvp builds being released i think i will get those videos done this week so that i have a baseline before going into these i'm really excited about the battle bomber uh I, i'm gonna rename it to demolition and again if you want to see a stand version of that build let me know it's something i've been contemplating now um since fighting some oaken builds in particular but I hope this helped and hopefully helps some of the transition into this. Uh, I mean, you can see how small the scroll wheel into all of these changes for update 35. I might do something again, similar uh, when it starts getting released closer to uh, the time here. I mean, this is a lot of patch notes, a lot of patch notes. 
so again happy hunting and enjoy your ESO experience until next time